Welcome to Northford Church. It is so good to have you with us. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to like and share this video as this really helps us get the good news of Jesus Christ out to as many people as possible. Our prayer is that you will be greatly blessed by today's message. But this is no replacement for church. So if you live locally to us, please come in person. We would be delighted to welcome you. If you cannot get here, send us a message. We have a fantastic pastoral care team who would love to bring church to you. If you live further afield and you're watching this and you're not part of a local fellowship of believers, again, send us a message and we will find a pastor close to you who preaches the truth and who will care for your soul. I pray that God will speak to you through the preaching of his word today. God bless. Redeemed. All for the glory of Jesus. Amen. 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 Right, 
Okay, if you could sit and step up there. I'd invite like the kids uh, to go to fresh and Sunday school. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank
theological dissertation. I don't want to hear the last jokes about the last pastoral counseling book. And I don't want to hear about the church building project. I don't want to hear about the ones who don't have, have food to eat. Mr. Preacher, I am hurt. I feel empty and useless without direction in my life. My question to you this morning is the same as that which the king addressed to the prophet Jeremiah. Do you have a word for me from the Lord? I don't know your experiences, but what I know for sure that each one of us one day will go through a similar situation. And in that moment, we will need to hear something from the Lord. Here in the scripture, which we just heard this morning, we see two people, two disparate people who needed healing. They are two complete different people, but they have something in common. Both of them are hurting. The first person we know is a man, we know his name is Jairus, whose daughter was close to death, and he is running to Jesus. Now, when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a ruler of a synagogue, of the synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house. And when the leader of the synagogue, humble, fell at Jesus' feet, his colleagues from the other synagogues hated him because they already said about Jesus that he is not Messiah, he is a liar. But Jairus is disparate. And in his disparate time, he is looking for a miracle. Doesn't matter what the other colleagues are thinking about Jesus, he is running to receive help from Jesus. The second person, it is an anonymous woman who is also disparate. She had bleeding for 12 years, the same number of years that Jairus' daughter has been living. This is a very difficult illness for any woman, but especially for a Jewish lady. Every part of her life was affected. Maternally, she could not have children. Everything she touched, according with the law of Old Testament, became unclean. Spiritually, she was not allowed to come together with other believers to worship. Physically, she was excluded from society. Twelve years without any care for her problem will have made her believe that she was lost is not any solution for her. But between these two people, there are some interesting differences. There are two people diametrically opposed, but both of them met at the feet of Jesus Christ. Jairus is a man and he is the leader of the synagogue. She is an anonymous, ano, anonymous, I don't know how to say exactly this word, without any prestige. Jairus is coming for his da daughter. She is coming for herself. The child was healthy for 12 years and now is near to death. The woman was ill for 12 years and now she is ready to, be, to receive healing. Jairus' need was public. Everybody in the community knew why he is there. The woman's need was private. Nobody knew why 
she is there. But Jesus knew. Now looking from verse 43 to 48, we can see a stolen healing. A woman was there who had been subject to ble bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why he had why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, you or fate has healed you. Go in peace. Now, can you see the fate of this lady? She said to herself, If I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. She realized that he, Jesus, is different compared with all the others who had successfully cleaned her out her bank account and take away all the hope. Now she has faith that finally she met someone who can touch her and deliver her and heal her. I don't know if you find the key to have faith, to increase your faith. I remember that when I was very young, I read a book about Moody, the evangelist Moody, and in that book he said, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed to God to have faith, to, to increase my faith, thinking that one day, like a light, uh, when it's raining, how do you call that? Uh, it will come and will fill me up with faith, but nothing happened. One day he said, I was reading Romans 10, verse 17. Faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. And he said, I know the key. I know how to have faith in the word of our Lord. If I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. But her faith enables her to overcome some of her obstacles. First of all, the first obstacle, her physical weakness. Can you think of this lady to have a hemorrhage for 12 years? Can you realize how weak she was? Maybe she could not stand up from her bed. But when she heard that Jesus is in her community, something happened and she overcame this physical weakness. Secondly, her lack of hope and despair. I don't know if you pass through a hard time when you cannot hope anymore. You think that is not any solution for you. Nobody can help you. God is not there to help you. You are without any help. This is the situation of this lady. She overcome her despair. The third obstacle, the crowd which pressed around Jesus. There were so many people, they wanted to be around Jesus, that even Jesus' mother could not come and touch him because people didn't allow her to be there. But this lady, you know, had so much faith 
that she could go through that crowd just to touch Jesus. Now another barrier, especially for a Jewish lady, her ceremonial uncleanness. She didn't suppose to touch anything according with the Leviticus law because everything will become unclean. She has to overcome this barrier. The fifth one, her social and religious standing which didn't allow her to touch Jesus because, as I said already, according with the Leviticus law, Jesus would become unclean. But this is wonderful that when unclean people like this lady, like me, and maybe like you, touch Jesus, he is not becoming unclean. We are becoming clean because Jesus is the one who can clean us. Now I have a question for you. What stops you for coming close to Jesus today to touch him? I mean, I don't mean just being in a meeting where Jesus is present. What stops you to touch him? Your finances, you have too many or almost nothing. Your pride, are you ashamed? I want to encourage you this morning, make everything what is possible, not just to be in a place where Jesus is present, but to touch him by faith. Faith cannot remain anonymous. Verse 44 through 47, she came up behind him and touched the edge of his clothes, and immediately her bleeding stopped. It's interesting what Jesus did. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at, at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. It's interesting. Looks like Jesus is not paying attention to her situation. He stopped and he's asking, who touched me? In my understanding, he's supposed to speak just to that lady saying, I know you came, why you came here. Now you are healed, go home. You don't need to speak anything. But looks like Jesus did, is not paying attention to the feelings of this lady. And, you know, Peter always is speaking the first one, and sometimes without processing, you know. Why do you ask, Master? You know, there are so many people here. No, 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 no. I don't speak about the ones who are pressing me. I am speaking about just someone who touched me with faith because that touch made me to give some power outside of me. Yeah, when she touched Jesus, he felt a power go out of him. You know, you can be part of a crowd, but not receiving the blessing even if you are next to him. Some of you have perhaps been in the church for your whole life, but you never touched in a personal way. Jesus Christ. It is one thing to press, to push against Jesus and this completely different situation to reach out and touch him in faith. Again, I want to encourage you this morning not just to be present here, but reach out 
to touch our Lord Jesus Christ by faith. Maybe we don't have a great faith, but we have a great Savior, and He responds to anybody who comes to Him and touch Him. Why Jesus ask this question? Why did Jesus make a woman come and admit in front of everybody that she touched him? Why? I, I have few reasons. One of them, Jesus desires a personal relationship and not an anonymous action. He doesn't want her just to be healed, take the blessing and go home. He wanted to have a, relation, a personal relationship with this lady. I love how Jesus is addressing this lady, daughter. I don't know if I find any other place in the Bible where Jesus will say to a lady, daughter. You know, I have three children, three grandchildren now, but among my three children I have a daughter. And I have a very special relationship with her. She is my girl. Even if she is married now, she has her own child. You know, when she comes to my house, you know, I hug her and, oh, you are my girl. It's a special type of relationship between father and the daughter. And this is how Jesus is called this lady. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Now, this lady came knowing that she has a physical problem. Jesus knew that she, has, she had a bigger need. She needed to become his daughter. To save her soul. Not just the body to be healed, but the whole person in a holistic way to be restored. And what is the most important thing than to have a restored relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ? Secondly, Jesus wants her to have faith in Him, not in her cloud. I, I can see in my mind this lady, if Jesus would not stop to ask who touched Him, going back and saying to all the community, I know where is the power in the clothing of Jesus. And Jesus didn't want her to go with this misunderstanding of what means to have faith in Christ, not in anything else. It is not so sad to see a Christian who is attracted to the tradition of the church and not to Jesus Christ himself. I remember reading the Bible that Sunday morning when Jesus raised up from the dead. Do you remember that lady who went in the morning to find Jesus? And when she saw an angel, she spoke with the angel. He saw, she saw the stone was removed. She saw the clothing of Jesus, the cross where Jesus was crucified. She didn't find Jesus. What she did? She started to cry. She came out from the tomb and she met someone. And because she was so sad, she didn't realize who is that one. She thought that is the manager of the garden. And I like, let me rephrase how I see uh, this meeting with the administrator, with the manager of the garden. Sir. You don't know me. I was a very sinful person. But one day, I met somebody. I met Jesus. I don't know if you know about him, but when I met him, he delivered me from my past. Since that day, I cannot live without him. I came here in the morning and I met an angel. Wow! Everybody want to have this type of experience. But she said, I didn't come to meet angels. I spoke with the angel. She's, the angel spoke to me. It's not important for me this. I saw the empty tomb. 
I am not looking for the empty tomb. I came specially to find Jesus. Amen. Do you understand what it means to have the real life? I remember in 96 I went first time in Israel. Since I was a child and I was not able to read and my mother was reading the Bible for me, I was thinking, wow, if I will be able to be in that places where my Lord Jesus Christ was, I think my faith will increase, you know. And I remember the day when I arrived in Jerusalem, I was with a few pastors from Romania. We prayed and we said, God, thank you so much for giving to us this opportunity. Now came the day when we visited the old city of Jerusalem. And the guide said to us, please remember, since Jesus was here until today, the walls of this city was destroyed 18 times and rebuilt 19 <coughs> times, which means we don't know for sure specific places. We went to the tomb where the Protestants think that Jesus was there. Wow, I remember when I went inside, one of my colleagues, he was so touched emotionally, he knelt down and he was ready to kiss the stone. And another pastor touched him and he said, don't do this. Look what is written here on the door. He is not here. He is risen. <laughs> we left that place. I remember... We went to a, another place and the guide said, here is the upper room where the Holy Spirit came upon that 120 disciples. I said, wow, finally, I am here. Where the Holy Spirit came and the church started. And somebody said, ask the guide, when this building was built? Oh, he said, after the crusade which means 1,200 1, years after Christ. Okay, uh, this is not really the place? Oh, we don't know. Maybe. Later we went to the other tomb where the Catholic and the Orthodox Church believes that it's the tomb of Jesus. And I came out and I was very confused. Two tombs, nobody knows, knows which one is the, the right one. We have places like the upper room, but nobody knows if really there was the place where the Holy Spirit came. And somebody asked the guide, can we be sure in anything in your country? Oh, he said, in our country all the stones are holy. Some are from some are holy for the Muslim people, some are holy for the Jewish people, and the rest of all are holy for you, Christians. Now, I am in my plane, coming back to Romania, thinking, why I spend this time in Israel to find a specific place, and I am more confused. And the answer which I received was this. <coughs> Christ is risen. He wants me to have a relation, a personal relationship with him, not with some places. At least this is my understanding. Faith is not a symbol or a ritual. Faith is in a person of Jesus Christ. Also, I believe that Jesus stopped and wanted to know who is that person who touched him because this lady needed a public healing. The people around her supposed to hear that she is another person. She can come to the service, to the worship place now. She can touch everything because she is a new person. Do you know why we have to confess our faith publicly? Yes, we may have a private relationship with our Lord. We pray, we read the Bible, we do the uh, spiritual discipline, but we need publicly to confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord. And this is the reason why 
I will be baptized today. Something so special happened in my life. The whole community, the heaven, needs to know that I am a new person in Christ. A disparate person whose healing is delayed, this is Jairus. When Jesus stopped to speak with this lady, just think about Jairus. He came desperate to Jesus saying, my daughter, my daughter is dying, come quickly and heal her. And Jesus started to go to his house and this lady is coming. And she stopped him. And now Jesus is speaking with people to find out who touched him. What was in the mind of Jairus? Wow, Jesus, you don't understand what means time. Why do you spend time to speak with this lady? Come to my house. And in his despair came this news. Don't bother anymore, the Lord. Your daughter is dead. What, situ what hard situation. Why? Why Jesus? Why you delayed? Why you don't, didn't come to my house? But, verse 50, hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid, just believe, and she will be healed. Wow! How long was for Jairus the road to his house? It is one thing to have faith when his daughter is still alive, but now it's too late, she is dead. But when Jesus arrived, Verse 51 and 52, at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go with him except Peter, John, and James, and the, ch and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were, were crying and mourning for her. Stop crying, Jesus said. She is not dead, but asleep. I like this expression. She is not dead, but asleep. Do you know that 13 times in the New Testament, God is using this word for somebody who passed away? We are not going for, you know, un without knowing where we go. We just go for a short sleep, waiting the day when we'll, we'll wake up. He didn't let anyone go with him except Peter, John, and James. Jesus sent out all the skeptical people. Only Peter, James, and John, and the family. Now, just think about this. Would I ask Jesus if I could go with him? You'll be one of them who will be invited in this house or you'll be put out because you are skeptical. Now, a few lessons at the end. The first one, go to Jesus even when the crowd don't allow you to touch him. Even if the situation which you are passing right now will say it's too late. On your way to Jesus, sometimes there are people, crowds, who can become a barrier to find Jesus. On your way to Jesus, sometimes your friends can be the barrier. And what is very sad, sometimes even the church, I mean the Christians who are not living the real faith, can become a barrier. But even so, I want to encourage you, don't look around, look at Jesus. Continue, secondly, continue to believe in Jesus, even if you are in the midst of a disaster. Jairus' situation became, became momentarily worse. It is very possible to put your trust in Jesus Christ and things in your life, in your family, to become worse. Your partner may die. Your child could remain rebellious, but remain connected with Jesus. In January 2000, 
I was in the United States of America, and at that time was not internet everywhere, but I received the news that my father is very sick. My father was a pastor for many years. Uh, he was 64 years old, and when I heard that he is sick, you know, I called him, and he said, you know, I just discovered that I have a brain tumor. I mean, everybody in our family was devastated. We could not believe that this can happen to us. We prayed, we fast. Our church prayed. Many other churches came together to pray with us. And we believed with all of our hearts that God will do a miracle. But in, Janu in uh, June f uh, 5th, my father go asleep. And we had so many questions in our life, in our minds. Why? Why now? But you know, when we trust Jesus, nothing worse, worse can happen because he is in a better life. He was a follower of Jesus. Let me end reading what Dr. Uh, Chambell a great 19th century preacher told of his experience. I cannot speak of this experience without becoming affected. When I remember that 40 years ago, our elder's daughter died. At that time, I called on Jesus, and he comforted me, comfort, uh, comforted me with these words. Don't be afraid. Just believe. He didn't say that she will be healed. She wasn't healed, at least at the early level. She went to live on the other side. But he said to her, Talita kumi, which, means, which literally means, get up, little lamb. lamb. But in her case, it didn't mean stay here on earth. He needed her, and, she, and he took her to be with him. She has been with him now for 40 years, according to the time measurements here, and I miss her every day. But his words, just believe, have been my strength over the years. The Christian can, be, can stay beside the loved one who is ill and pray that he will be healed or she will be healed. Then believing the, that God can heal, when the loved one dies, he continues to believe that God healed him or her by taking him to the eternity to be with God. My dear brothers and sisters, this life here on the earth is not everything. We have a better life. Trust Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share the word with you this morning.